All right, Chief, thank you so much for talking with us. Um, so tell us, you uh, have, have been the interim chief for a couple months now. Are you excited to officially take the position? You know, I am. Um, it's it's been um, it's been a lot going on in the, in the last seven months, and I, I'll tell you that um, I'm excited to continue. I think we've made some progress, and I I know we've built some relationships with the community, and we just need to keep on the same track that we're on and not start all over. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, obviously the department is going through a really challenging time. They're under federal investigation. There's a state investigation. You've been with the department for over 20 years. Um, tell us, you know, and you've been serving during interim chief during this challenging time. How do you plan um, to come in and create that change that the community is asking for? So I've, I've just got to be open to, to listening. I, I promised from the very beginning that I would give them a voice. Um, I'm very much excited about working with the community task force and seeing what, um, what um, recommendations they come up with and working with city management. And I just need to keep holding people accountable, being transparent, and also looking at our directives and making training changes where we need to make them um, so that people have, can have confidence in us again. Um, let's go back to the incident that happened on Sunday. It's now gotten national attention. Um, a lot of people are talking about this and have eyes on the video that witnesses have taken. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you said that yesterday that this all goes back to a license plate issue and a scanner issue, but officers also have discretion. Um, should more discretion have been used in that incident and were the ac actions of the officers appropriate? So I want to first again apologize uh, to the family. Uh, of those children and the driver, Miss um, Gilliam, on how that was handled. And um, yes, the officers should have recognized uh, that this was not a typical stolen vehicle call. And as soon as that uh, was raised, uh, they should have immediately responded. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, they were doing a felony stop and I wish that someone would have stepped in and said, okay, let's, let's change what we're doing. Um, I know it was a felony stop and it is also a high risk stop, but it was, a, you know, a, 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 the driver was a mom. There was a lot of children in the car. Right. Is it typical for that many officers to respond? And why did so many officers respond and continue to respond even after they realized the vehicle wasn't stolen? So, um, you know, I don't know exactly um, how many officers arrived on scene. I can tell you that in a felony stop, you're, you're going to have um, probably at least three vehicles, if not more show up for that. Um, but when it was found out that it was not stolen, I think there was a crowd that was angry about what they were seeing. And so I think uh, people could hear the screaming on the air and officers will sometimes just roll that way to see if there's uh, a situation that they need to help with. And so that's probably why so many officers showed up is that they could hear um, the disruption in the background uh, over the radio. Now, one of the reasons the, the crowd continued to gather was obviously there was a six-year-old girl that was detained. Yes, ma'am. You know, I understand this is a high risk stop. Um, are you considering changing this policy of detaining children? And especially after looking at that video. It, absolutely, it, it shouldn't have happened. And we will uh, be, I've already spoken to the uh, division chief over training. He's already gotten a hold of the academy staff and talking about how we train with these different types of scenarios to make sure this doesn't happen again. It's, it, it's uncalled for and it's, it shouldn't have happened, and I, I wish we could take it back. Did you watch some of the witness video uh, that was taken, and if so, what was your reaction? I think everybody, just hearing the, that, that young, those young children crying, um, it, it just tears at your heartstrings. I think everybody um, also, I felt sick to my stomach. Um, I think that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's horrific that it happened, and we need to move forward, and we need to train better, and we need to make sure our officers know that if something like this is happening, that they need to change their, deviate from their training and change what's happening immediately. This is obviously a very tense time. Um, uh, as chief now, what are you telling officers as they engage with the community? Um, I'm, first of all, I'm thanking them for continuing to do this job. It's, um, it's, it's a very volatile time and understandably so. The nation is calling for change. They're call it, calling for action. And I'm telling them that uh, we're going to get through this and we are going to rise to the level and be and evolve as we need to evolve as an agency. And, and I also tell them to be very, very careful out there. Um, obviously, we've had two officers shot recently. And so it's a very dangerous time, but they are a part of the solution. And I want them to be change agents. And I want them to take responsibility of their, each and individual action 
make a difference and hopefully heal what's going on in our community. What are going to be some of your first um, priorities as chief and uh, or will you be making any changes um, as you enter this position? Um, so there are some um, other promotions that need to happen. There's some people that are in acting roles, um, so that'll be happening. But really the focus right now is to continue uh, the path that we're down, which is looking at all of our policies, uh, revamping them as need be. We've, we've changed quite a few already uh, since I've been, since I've take, taken over. Um, also, we need to make sure that our officers know that there's peer support and wellness out there for them and for them to take advantage of that. Um, and then, you know, just, we just need to heal. We need to heal as a police department and we need to heal as a community and we need to all make the right decisions each and every day. And I know none of us are perfect, but we really need to strive to be, um, to meet the expectations of this community. Will you be looking at any um, outside models of policing or any outside voices outside of Aurora um, as you look to change and move things forward? Yep, we always look across the, the nation for best practices. Um, we, we have conversations with the major city chiefs, which Aurora is a part of, um, and we talk about incidents uh, across the nation, how we can do better and how we can meet the demands of of the society right now. Society wants a different a way of policing and in the Aurora Police we're committed to doing that. Okay, um, I, the last question I have is, you know, you said you want to be transparent. You want Aurora Police to be transparent. We were interested in seeing the scanner traffic, um, listening to that, and also we're wondering if we could see the body camera footage from the incident on Sunday. Would you make that available to us today? Um, so I will have to um, check with internal affairs. There is a process that we go through, but yes, we, we, are, we are looking into this case, uh, investigating it. So I'm not sure if we're able to release those at this time because of that. Um, but as soon as we can, I will do that. Obviously the Senate bill is, is requiring us to, um, to release body worn camera within a certain time frame, And so we'll be complying with those, with those deals. So, but I appreciate your interest in the story. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak to it. And again, to apologize to that family. Anything else you would like to say to the community um, about your new role or about that incident or about anything going on with the department? You know, I just think, um, I just want to thank council uh, for giving me this opportunity and, and approving uh, city manager Twombly's selection in me. Uh, is an historic selection as being the first female chief in Aurora and I'm honored to do that. And I hope that it inspires other women that want to become uh, police officers, as well as the women in my agency, uh, to move up and know that they can be a part of the change. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. you. Bye.